hello guys i hope you're well thank you so much for joining me today say so we're here in the peak district come to shoot some misty conditions with some heather and some silver birch but i also want to talk about something that i've been thinking about recently and that is why quite recently uh, fuji cameras have become very popular with landscape photography youtube channels uh, quite a number of larger you know youtube channels that focus on landscape photography have moved over to the fuji system so i thought i'd talk a little bit about that today and um, perhaps their reasons why and also why i continue to use fuji cameras and a little bit about how my setup works in terms of filming and photography as well this morning i've taken a number of photographs actually i've been here for a couple of hours uh, conditions were really really foggy actually really good conditions i wanted to capture some minimalist shots with the heather and some of these silver birch trees here so i've done that this morning i'll put those images up for you now and then i'm going to concentrate on trying to find a more complex image with some rocks and boulders and try to piece together something quite complex uh, something to work on for a little bit and then we'll come back to some of the reasons why Fuji cameras are becoming so popular for landscape photography. So, it started to rain. Actually, that's probably gonna help us with the composition I've got set up here because I'm doing a bit of scouting around and this area looks fantastic actually. There's lots of boulders and heather and that sort of thing. And it's, yeah, some ferns as well, got some silver birch. The problem is the sky, you probably see behind me, it's just gray, you know, very, very bland indeed. So I think if I get some rain, you know, between my trees there and the backdrop, it's just gonna soften that transition between you know the landscape itself and the sky hopefully so if, it, if it's softer it, it will fall away and it'll look you know more pleasing to the eye a little bit more graduated as opposed to that hard kind of line where you've got the dark green hills and then that bright gray sky so that's the plan and i've got yeah really nice setup actually here this heather looks absolutely beautiful and it contrasts so well with the boulders and yeah really nice i really like it looks beautiful to the eye anyway hope that will translate into a photograph but first, yeah, I thought I'd just quickly talk about, say, five reasons actually why I think that um, some of the larger landscape photography YouTube channels have moved over to the Fuji system. So recently we've got, you know, Thomas Heaton's moved over to the Fuji system or at least added it into his setup. Um, also, I think Adam Gibbs has picked up an XT4. Mark Denny, I think, has moved completely over to the Fuji system. Um, and that also, you know, goes along with some some other, you know, YouTube landscape photography channels that have been using the Fuji system for years, like maybe Nigel Dance and Andy Mumford. Um, and of course, myself, I've been using Fuji now for about sort of three and a half years uh, from professional documentary work and also from a landscape photography. And it's worked really well for me. I've really enjoyed using it. That being said, I think you can take landscapes with any camera so you know just because some of these larger channels have moved over to the fuji doesn't necessarily mean that if you're with another brand that you need to move 
because I think any camera can take great landscape photography photos these days. So the five reasons are the cameras excel at both video and photo. So if you're making YouTube videos, it's uh, really handy to be able to you know, use a system that works for both. They have a great lens lineup as well. So that's great for landscape photography. They're also very affordable as well, which you know is a big bonus. They're also very lightweight and compact. And finally, they produce lovely colors. And I think that is a real key area for landscape photography, having really nice, natural looking colors. So I think in short, they tick a lot of boxes. You know, they're small, lightweight, compact, easy to pack away easy to fit into a small bag as well which is great especially if you're doing long hikes and camping gear you've got that you know all the camping gear and that type of thing in your bag as well it's definitely helpful if your camera gear is you know on a smaller scale um, I also think it's great if you're traveling a lot as well a lot of these larger landscape trophies are off to you know Iceland and you know Patagonia and all these amazing places obviously cart all that gear around with you as well so that is another big bonus for having a smaller system and obviously the APS-C size sensor means that everything is smaller the lenses are smaller the bodies themselves are smaller and that means the bag that you need to take is also smaller and all of these things contribute into a really tempting prospect for you know landscape photographers in general so let me quickly talk you through what we've got here yeah it is quite complex there's lots going on i've got three or four boulders here on the left which almost looks like a staircase there's a couple of boulders further over to the right hand side which just helps balance that off a little bit and then just keep that foreground balance we didn't want too much over to one side so we've got a, a nice balance there there's some ferns down here in the foreground which are really nice they're really vibrant green color which is great and we've got these dots of heather sort of meandering through the pathway that we've got here up to a collection of silver birch trees and there's about four or five trunks there of this main sort of crop of trees which is essentially my background uh, the sky is obviously very grey, like I mentioned before, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to, you know, maybe get that transition between the foreground, the background trees and that sky, a nice graduated softness due to this rain and mist that we've got lingering around. So right now I'm at F13 and I'm focused on the third boulder up, which is about a third of the way into the scene. And F13, that's allowing me to get everything sharp without the need to focus stack. So that is obviously a massive bonus. It's always nice to be able to get everything in one shot. And I'm probably about four meters away from my nearest foreground element. And that's the reason I'm able to get everything sharp. I'm not too close there. At the minute, I'm an eighth of a second. Um, there's no wind or anything like that. It's still, but obviously this rain is coming down. I'm just gonna cover the camera up again. Nothing more to say about it. Actually, I'm gonna take this shot right now while this rain is coming down. It's just gonna soften things up and hopefully it's gonna be a really nice shot. I hope you enjoyed that shot guys. It certainly looks nice here with my own eyes. Hope it translates into an image. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd just quickly talk about why or how I use my Fuji setup and what I've got. So I use the X-T3 and the X-H1 at the moment. Two very different cameras actually. I generally use the X-T3 to film with uh, because it's got better face detection autofocus which is great for doing these pieces to camera. It means I can just turn it on, point it at me and it's going to track my face, fingers crossed, most of the time. So that I don't really have to worry about focusing when I'm doing the bits of the camera. So that's really cool. The X-H1 is great because it's got IBIS in it. So if I want to do a handheld shot in low light, can do, I can use the IBIS on that. Also, if I want to do some handheld video work, I can use the IBIS to keep you know, a steady shot as well. So I've got you know, two cameras there. They both take the same batteries, which is really, really good. So I mean, so I've only got one set of batteries to worry about. In terms of the lenses, I've got the 18 to 55 and the 10 to 24 and the 50 to 140. Now that covers all of the focal length that I really need for landscape tool from 10 mil right up to 140 mil. So it covers everything. But what's also great about it is that I've got 
the 10 to 24 to film with when I'm using the 18 to 55 to take photographs with and vice versa. So if I want to use the 10 to 24 to take a landscape photo, I can use the 18 to 55 to film with. They've both got um, image stabilization as well, which is also really good. So you can see how just those three lenses and two bodies allow me to do pretty much everything I need to do in terms of filming and also the photography. So yeah, I need three lenses and two bodies. And because the bodies are so light as well, you know, it, re it really is just a really easy system to use for landscape photography and for filming. So combining those two um, you know, different genres really together really helps you know with this system it's just yeah it's just really really easy change things up swap things around and i've always got a lens to either film with or shoot with depending on what i'm trying to get actually the light's looking great again now and i'm still set up so i'm gonna get a couple more here and uh yeah move on see if i can find something else so guys as always thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate your time if you're new here please do consider subscribing we're doing weekly videos out in the landscape shooting some landscape photography so yeah please do consider subscribing if you're new hit that notification bell that way you'll be notified next time i upload a video as well and if you think others might like it too please do consider sharing this video that would really help me out a ton so until next time guys take care and i'll see you soon